We are just heading off to do a little bit more log splitting uh, with a fallen tree over there. Uh, this was actually really nice grass last year, fresh seeded grass. Hey, you on the phone too, boy? He's on the phone to Joe Seals. Look at him hiding from me. Joseph! Just gonna go for some tea. I'm gonna play dead or alive with the sheep. Husband! Are you? Are you alive? Wow, you're in a funny bald patch. Is this your home? Have you been frequenting this tiny bit? This is really strange. Why is there a bald patch in the field? But earlier today, I had a surprise phone call from a lady, a lady called Nivana um, from Mayo Mattresses. Now, uh, Nivana doesn't necessarily watch my videos, but has watched some latter ones when I was talking about shavings on the beds. And she said, and she said, Holy Mother of Jesus, Charlotte, like that in those words um you don't need sawdust like that on male mattresses um the mattresses themselves are the comfy part the only reason you would need sawdust on is just to absorb anything like a bit of milk dripping or anything from their feet now i would probably keep up with a little bit of sawdust on the back because our sheds as you can see right now are getting scraped twice a day but we do not have automatic scrapers and they could at some point be cleaner. Oh my god, I'm so cold, my lips have gone blue. How pathetic is that? Oh, I'm so pathetic right now. Um, so yeah, from the horse's mouth, not that I'm calling Nirvana a horse, because she ain't, we do not need loads of sawdust on the beds. Now, obviously in true boy fashion, we bought 10 pallets full. So we're going to be in Sawdust for quite some time. Thank you Anna for ringing and not only making my day by speaking to me in Irish, um, but for probably saving us quite a lot of money in the long run. Um, because let's be honest, that stuff was not cheap. It was not cheap at all. Tell you, you know when, uh, my lady, you know when I was in the Bobcat, I wouldn't have seen that. I would not have seen that. In this, however, excuse me, can you mind your leg? Was that there was the primary concern with the bobcat visibility was limited. Yes, life. Go on, get back on your own. Cracked it. Got a bit of colour off my face. All right, what are you doing, you nosy thing? This is one of the reasons why I can understand why people don't like them in twos. Like, needs must, because we're, you know, we have to, but... Like, look at that one there on its own, just chilling. So I've just moved this cow down from the calving shed. Uh, she's the one that had had twins. There is a possibility I need to set up and just press like find the teats, but there's a possibility I might not need to. She won't give a lot of milk.
everyone asking how Lisa is. Lisa's here. Absolutely fine. She's doing really, really well. Um, uh, what was water and, and blood turned then into proper mastitis -y, like lumpy, horrible blood. And then it turned into um, proper mastitis -y, like lumpy, horrible milk. And now it's turning back sort of very milky but still lumpy. Now, I don't know if she'll get a quarterback. I haven't got a clue. She was close to drying off anyway. So we've just dried her off a little bit early and she can just stay outside. my pig house it's for my pig house don't look at me like that it's gonna look cool it's gonna be like tiny tin cottage and then i'm hoping i'm gonna paint it black so that it sort of half resembles um what was here the black barn um it's not i don't know if you can you paint tin black i'm going with yes i'm going with yes don't tell me i'm wrong can i just put a tiny insert in here because i i feel the need to tell this story and i didn't put it in the video um I am currently sorting out lambs, just being naughty lambs, and those tin sheets, so they were on the garage before the garage at Roy's dad's house, and they will have been on the loft since Roy was five years old in storage, and we've just brought them out to clap the pig house in. So the pig house lives down the lane. I was going to paint it in black, but a few people, since they've heard me say that, especially Mark, um, had said, no, don't do that because it'll make it really hot inside. So we're going to just have Tin Cottage and I'm going to actually get them a little name plaque and a mailbox and everything called Tin Cottage and the pigs have got Tin Cottage coming down the lane. Um, I wanted it more of a nod towards the black barn that used to be there before the big shed. But um, yeah, we're going to leave it Tin Cottage and it'll be really cute. But yeah, 35, 36 years since then. Tin sheets have been on a roof and they've been in storage and we've brought them out to use them, which I just think's just, yes, that is, that makes me happy. Do not burst my bubble. And to the pleasant person who decided to tell me last time's video that I shouldn't get pigs because I won't be able to handle them with all I've got on. I already have pigs. Pay attention. Oh, it's a really nice. Oh. Oh, oh, roll on your back for a scratch. Oh, you are doing. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we are mowing. Carl's mowing. Let's put that right. <laughs> there ain't no way we are mowing. Carl is mowing. Um, somewhere along here, I grabbed hold of a piece of barbed wire when I was chasing that cow that had escaped from next door. Um, luckily, the sheep have just broken in and trampled a bit of the undergrowth so I can see a little bit better. I just need to find it because I don't want Carl to mow over it. Uh, the fields look messy all of a sudden. All of a sudden. I thought it was round here. And oh, there it is. Yeah, first couple of years when we came to lay there, we religiously reseeded a couple of fields a year. Um, just, honest to God, you could take these to common riding. Just to keep the ground fresh. Um, and it worked really well for us. And then obviously we, we got on other projects. And to be perfectly honest, time and money was spent elsewhere building a giant shed silage pits stewardship all that kind of thing and we definitely took our eye off the ball with regards to the actual soil itself and the ground um not really a very clever thing to do but it was unavoidable in the situation that we were in so now big shed is up and running cows are here milking we have monthly income which is crazy we can now start to concentrate on a little bit of the ground again. Now I'm not saying we're going to have a mass overhaul of the farm, 
but we will be reseeding a couple of fields a year. Now, someone said the other day, don't, don't reseed that, don't um, plow that field out at this time of year because you'll have a dry summer and nothing will grow. Um, I will leave that to the guys who do that work, the contractors yeah. that we use. They've always been really good with us, so we'll leave that to them. We'll not make those decisions ourselves because I'm not experienced enough to do so. And as well, remember, we historically have been used to making a lot of round bales, literally over a thousand round bales a year we were making at one point. Then we put silage pits up. So we are still, still very inexperienced in that area. Um, we used to make a lot of hay. Funnily enough, this month every year, when the Appleby Horse Fair was on, we were mowing grass, we were making hay, and we were making silage bales and things like that. Um, it is, in fact, Sunday now, and the horse fair is on. I could think of nothing worse than going into Appleby right now. Um, I don't know why anyone would want to. It is carnage. Carnage on every level. Carnage. Um, traffic. Carnage. People. Just absolute carnage all throughout. And it's just become some dodgy tourist attraction mingled up with the wrong sort of people tagging onto the horse fair and breaking the law. It's just not a place that you'd want to be right now. Um, Appleby is a tiny town that we live in and we respect and we love. And we have lived in the middle of Appleby and also worked in the middle of Appleby. We had the garage in the middle of Appleby. Um, and when people say, oh, but you make money, trust me when I say this, no money is made on fair week from things like garages, etc. Because all of the normal, you know, farmers' wives and whatnot from the rural community that would come in and spend 200 quid topping the petrol cans up and stuff, they go elsewhere and instead you are just faced with a stream of four by fours coming to put a fiver in uh, one after the other just so that they could use you for parking for, well, I'd like to say five minutes, but it's not. It's probably a half an hour queuing co op, isn't it? And all they do is nip next door, historically, obviously the co-op is just there now instead of the garage. Nip next door, use you for parking. And then it was just a very, very slow, stressful day. Very, very slow and stressful. So yeah, historically though, we made crop that time of year, um, but no more because we have silage pits to fill and it's a different thing. But funnily enough, we're coming back round to it. We are mowing today. Um, I think Carl is, I think he's a bit busy and then he's coming after he's finished doing what he's doing. So this is a bonus field that we weren't going to be silaging. It's normally first field grazing ground, but obviously the cows aren't outside as many of you have noticed. So we are silaging it, but we're being very careful because it is not silage ground. It's bumpy grazing ground that's never been reseeded in a million years. Um, so we're staying away from all of the edges and doing things very carefully so Carl doesn't get cross at me. I won't lie, I'm not okay about this tractor steering itself. It's just not, it's not normal. So Carl's mowing. Um, I'm just gonna go up and Roy is making tea because he's a, a good husband. Um, I'm just, these bottom fields, I was just going around the edges with Carl, um, I'm just staying out a little bit of the ones that we don't usually um, silage. But yeah, it seems to be, to be fair, it seems to be some grass on. But it has been, it's been wet, it's been warm, and yeah, it looks all right, to be fair. I'm not panicking about the amount of grass that's on already. And these are the these are the lesser fields to be fair. The ones down the river will be great because um, they're fresher seeds. That looks like a really big field to walk up now, doesn't it? I wish I'd have uh, maybe hopped out at the top of that hill. <laughs> and FYI for anyone wondering, buttercups have no nutritional value for livestock. They are pointless in a field. So, you know, when I said there's grass on down the river here, I'm not even going to do anything fancy. It's actually quite scary. It's... 
Ve klasy. Ve, ve klasy. Ve klasy. There's been pheasants and all sorts flying up. Is there a phobia about this? I'm scared of one grass. This is crazy. Especially as well, don't know. Don't look at that cow parsley, it's not here. <laughs> Don't look over there either. We've got flowers in the silage, that's lovely. A big a big daisy. Dead regenerative me. All sorts in here. Our grass is longer than your grass. <laughs> no, but it's a competition really. I'm very bumpy here. <laughs> Carl refuses to put his lights on because he's not being the first to give in when there's someone next door mowing but I said he doesn't need to we're far superior look at all this grass oh he's racing us now quick go faster go faster <laughs> I think we won, I think we won. That, that leg. <laughs> Quick, turn around faster, turn around faster. No, he's making away, he's getting away. Go, go, go. Well, if he turns around any faster, he'll throw that thing over. <laughs> Carl's got a new tractor, so his lights are gonna be way brighter than those lights. <laughs> Dazzle him, blind him. <laughs> it's actually dark. I can't see him, he's blended into the trees. That, I'm sure that was a spot of rain on the window oh, there. Look at that. What lights are these? I can see everything. <laughs> 